Well, hello there, and welcome back to Dividend Compounders with Cheese. Today, let's talk about Hershey, ticker symbol HSY. The Hershey Company was founded in 1894 by Milton Hershey in Pennsylvania. Hershey is an international chocolate, sweets, and savory snacks company. And Hershey is currently near their 52-week low, so it may or may not be a good time to jump in. So in this video, we are going to look at the intangibles, the finances, and run some valuation models to determine if it's a delicious or a disgusting dividend stock. And if you cannot tell by the channel name, well, good sir, we appreciate dividend compounders. So let's go ahead and check out their dividend over the years. So in 2013, they paid $1.81 per share in dividends. And then when you fast forward throughout the years, it does in fact look like they increased it every single year. And as of last year, their dividend was $3.87. This is a dividend compounder. Hooray! And as of 2023, the dividend is now $4.45 per share. And just take a look at how consistent Hershey is in increasing their dividend. This is like when you are rooting for your favorite hometown sports team that's consistently been having a losing season after season, and now they're just winning. This is an amazing thing to see and to feel. All right, so let's check out the rest of their dividend profile. So the current dividend yield is not that high, but it is respectable. It's 2.62%. And the payout ratio is 51%. Very healthy. This is a green light. Their frequency is every three months or quarter. And the dividend growth rate is 15%. Oh my goodness. This is an amazing dividend compounding company so far. I know I sound biased, but stick with me. So now we know their dividend looks fantastic, but more importantly, how has the company performed over the years? Well, if you had put $1,000 into Hershey stock back in January 2013, well now it would be worth $3,315. Hershey is a company that I've had my eye on for a really long time, but I didn't want to pay a price that was too high for the company. Another one is PepsiCo. PepsiCo and Hershey, whenever you can snag these companies on a discount, my goodness gracious, this is not financial advice, but you might want to evaluate whether to jump in or not. So in this hypothetical situation, last year, your total return would have been $4,000, but this year they have been on the downtrend and we're going to talk about why that is happening. Next, let's go ahead and talk about their business model and economic moat if they have one. So Hershey has historically been known for their chocolates and candies. However, as of recently, in the past five years or so, they have started to make aggressive acquisitions to diversify their portfolio. They have added companies such as Skinny Pop, Pirate's Booty. On a side note, that is a hilarious popcorn business name. And they have acquired Dots Pretzels. Why? Why are they doing this and jumping out of their comfort zone of chocolates? Well, let's figure that out together. This is a transformation spearheaded by the CEO, Michelle Buck, as you see on your screen. She became the CEO of Hershey back in 2017. And prior to that, she spent some time at Frito-Lay and at Nabisco. And if you know anything about those companies, those operations have a heavy emphasis on salty snacks, which at the time of Michelle's takeover, Hershey's was still only doing candy and chocolates. She's the reason why Hershey's is pivoting to include a portfolio of savory snacks. Now, between you and me, when I was younger, I absolutely adored sugary candies and chocolates. But the older that I get, the more I gravitate towards savory snacks. So I can kind of resonate with what she's doing here. In Harvard Business Review, which by the way, I am absolutely sick of that publication. During my MBA, we worshipped those articles and had to do deep dives on the most mundane business principles. Anyways, CEO Buck said, We set a bold new strategy to make Hershey a snacking powerhouse by expanding into the savory and better for you product category. And this is a reason why if you are going to invest in individual companies, it is so important for you to stay up to date with what the company is doing. Because if you invested into Hershey, believing only in the thesis of chocolates, and now Hershey is is pivoting to include savory snacks, you might be out of the loop and you might not like Hershey. That's why it's so important to stay up to date with what your businesses are doing. And I think Michelle is the right CEO for Hershey to stay relevant, as long as they stay in the consumables category. If I find out she's trying to pivot Hershey into being a skincare company, then I'm out. I'm out of here. So they have three business segments. Number one is 
is the North America Confectionery. Number two is the North America Salty Snacks Division. And number three is the International Market. So their main customers are grocery chains and convenience stores. They buy Hershey products by the truckload, and then the end consumer is for people like you and I. Pretty straightforward and easy to understand. It's also worth mentioning they get licensing fees when other companies use Hershey products. Like when an ice cream company decides to put Reese's Pieces into their ice cream tubs. Oh my gosh, that's a dangerous combination right there because whenever there is chocolate candy in my ice cream growing up, one bowl would quickly turn into the entire tub. And here's the high level summary of how each business segment is doing. So their presence in North America is represented by double digit growth in nearly every financial metric for the past five years or so for both sweet and salty snacks. Unfortunately, their products are relatively weak internationally, and I've traveled around the world. And my observation is that Hershey has room for improvement globally because Germans would rather eat German chocolates. When I lived in Germany, I do not believe that I've ever seen an American candy being stocked in the German grocery stores. And when I lived in Japan, the Japanese people would rather eat Japanese candies and chocolates. And that pattern is portrayed in nearly every culture and country. Mexicans would rather eat Mexican candy. So I think Hershey's biggest opportunity is becoming more relevant internationally. So let's go ahead and talk about some risks for the company. This came out very recently, and the title is Hershey Slips After Bank of America Warns on Growth Moderation in 2024. Because there's risks for their financial bottom line due to the increasing prices of sugar and coca. With coca doubling in price since last year, and by the way, it's still increasing. Yes, it's really scary. The price of sugar is a little too high as well. As a matter of fact, inflation, you better chill out because I'm getting sick of it. Everybody out here is getting sick of it. I mean, it's not like our compensation and wages are increasing to match the pressure of inflation. By the way, if your workplace is not giving you a raise for the past year or two, I highly recommend that you be vocal about it during your next performance review. And another risk of Hershey is the fact that the general consumer now has more health awareness than ever before. Now we know how evil sugar and artificial sweeteners really are. So consumers could ditch Hershey's to limit their intake of unhealthy sweets. But realistically, stevia and monk fruit are natural sweeteners that Hershey can implement in lieu of sugar. So I'm not too worried about that thesis. If Hershey decides to pivot into making sweet treats that are high protein with natural ingredients, they would become popular among the health-oriented demographic. And I think that's a fundamental transformation that's not a if, but a when. I think eventually Hershey is going to have to pivot into using healthier and better ingredients. Papa John's pizza. <laughs> Moving on to another risk. Something that you want to be aware of is similar to any other major corporation. Hershey is currently dealing with legal affairs. Like, take a look at this. Hershey sued over chocolate containing heavy metals. And this can lead to a huge fine with consequences, but they should be able to bounce back considering their cash situation, which we will take a look at here in a little bit. Now, as an owner of the company, I think metal being in their chocolate is pretty disgusting, and it sounds like a supply chain issue they really need to dig into and fix ASAP. But then again, I'm going to go ahead and assume that almost everything that we eat is already contaminated with some type of mold, metal. And However, this is still unacceptable, Hershey's. Get it together. Their biggest retail partner is Walmart. Did you know that Walmart is the go-to choice for groceries for about 25.2% of Americans? So one out of every four people get their groceries done at Walmart. Now, Walmart is super busy and is a high volume business. Believe it or not, Walmart's profit margin are razor thin. It's like low single digits. However, the reason why they're able to thrive so much is the quantity and volume of how much they sell every single day. And guess what? Their shelf space is limited. They can't afford to stock items that are not going to sell fast. And due to the result of recent quarters and the slowing demand of sweets being sold, on their most recent earnings call, Walmart said that they have decided to allocate less chocolates on the shelves. 
This does include Hershey products. Walmart made a call out saying that less consumers are buying unhealthy foods, so they're going to replace those chocolates with more healthy oriented snacks. Now with a mature business like Hershey's, revenue growth is usually the result of price increases in their products and through strategic acquisitions. Like when you think about the sales of Jolly Ranchers, the volume and the quantity stays the same year after year. However, it's the price of the Jolly Ranchers that grow that revenue. So it's not a sexy business by any means. And that's another reason why I support Hershey in their acquisitions of like Pirate's Booty and Skinny Pop Popcorn. As long as they keep making strategic acquisitions, they're going to be okay. Low key, I do not think they have an economic moat because they have fierce competition for Mars, Nestle, Mondelez International. By the way, I have friends that work at all three of those companies. You know what? I take that back because they do have a business moat and it's their association with nearly every every major holiday, like Halloween, Valentine's Day, like you can see on your screen, or the snacks and candy that you eat at a movie theater, whether you buy it at the concession stand or at Walmart and you sneak it in. I'm not judging you. Either way, that revenue is Hershey's. I also think they have a moat once a month for us ladies. When we be feeling a certain type of way due to nature, chocolate can be a woman's best friend. I'm just kidding. I'm a guy. <laughs> and it's also worth mentioning that their chocolate is very popular in baking. In particular, their chocolate chips are goat when you're making cookies. And another fun fact about Hershey's is they were the official chocolate supplier of MREs for the US military back in the early wars. Moving on to an unrelated note, when I was in middle school more than two decades ago, I was a part of the symphony orchestra. I was the first chair, first violin. And we took a field trip to Hershey, Pennsylvania to give a free concert to the folks there. And as a young lad, this was really fun because Hershey actually has an amusement park called Hershey Park. And as you can see on your screen, here's all the different rides and attractions that are at the park. Can you imagine about 80 middle school students just going crazy on a Wednesday afternoon? It was one of the better field trips to say the least. We also went on a field trip to Bush Gardens, which in my opinion pales in comparison to Hershey Park. My question to you if you're paying attention is, did your school take you guys to any theme parks as a field trip? I'm curious because I feel like this is not a common occurrence. Anyways, let's go ahead and move on to current news or events that are surrounding the company. So Mr. Beast, who is the most popular YouTuber on the platform, has entered the chocolate industry in January of 2022. And let me just tell you, he has a grip on Gen Z. They will buy anything that he releases, endorses, or recommends. And each one of his videos has millions of views from 10-year-olds all around the world. Now his brand of chocolates is called Feastables. And at first, he had an exclusive partnership with Walmart. And the crazy thing is, his chocolates, the Feastables, were consistently sold out almost every single day. So why did Mr. Beast decide to enter into this space? Well, it's because he believed that there wasn't enough innovation happening in the candy industry, and Mr. Beast hated the unhealthy ingredients that were in the existing candies. So this one right here is Mr. Beast Bar, original chocolate. Only four ingredients. And when you scroll down, his vegan chocolate bar, that's all it is. Another reason why he wanted to do this is because he has Crohn's disease, which is where your intestines and digestible tract is constantly irritated. And you know that feeling when you have a stomach ache? It's kind of like that, but 10 times worse. And since he has this, he wanted to make snacks that he could enjoy. Because I believe with Crohn's disease, there's a lot of dietary restrictions. And I think this is genius because there's a lot of people who actually suffer from similar types of diseases and illnesses, and he fulfilled a demand that wasn't being met. So good for him. And although in the beginning, his partnership was only with Walmart, as of recently, Mr. Beast has expanded the inventory pipeline to include Target, 7-Eleven, Albertsons, everything that you see on your screen. Now they all have access and sell the Feastables chocolate line. Now some people are even going as far as to say this is only the beginning of his chocolate domination and takeover. So here's my commentary. 
As much as I would like to root for Mr. Beast, when he decided to launch burgers during the pandemic, it was talked about everywhere on YouTube, and it was really popular at the time. However, it ended up being a flop in the end. I think once all the marketing fades, so will the hype surrounding Feastables. Because marketing and advertising alone can only take your products so far, and that's because Beast Burgers operated their supply chain on a very decentralized level. There was no standardization. I mean, there was ingredients that had to be included, but not the methodology, the texture, the flavor. And because those burgers were operated on such a decentralized level, each restaurant ran a ghost kitchen representing Beast Burger and made the burger their unique way, making a huge variability on what you would get each time. I watched video after video of reviews of people ordering it on DoorDash, and sometimes it would come from an Italian restaurant, other times from an Indian restaurant. So my assumption is this, Mr. Beast did not create a chocolate factory where he knows exactly what is happening. Instead, he's probably outsourcing this to a private food manufacturing company like UNFI or Performance Food Group. And what Mr. Beast is doing is no different than what Hershey is doing, except Hershey has been doing this for decades and has perfected the logistics. Because think about it, the moment that Mr. Beast runs into logistics issues, that might be all it takes for the chocolate kingdom to crumble. And besides, I know Mr. Beast is really advocating that he only uses five ingredients for his milk chocolate. So that got me curious. What, what does Hershey do? So this is the Hershey's milk chocolate, which is probably one of their most famous product lines. And I decided to look at their ingredients to see how many ingredients are there. There's milk chocolate, milk, cocoa butter, skim milk, milk fat, and a couple others. It's literally the same amount of ingredients as Mr. Beast. And since Hershey has been doing this for over 100 years, whereas Mr. Beast has only been doing this for about two years under his belt, his business operations will just not be the same quality as Hershey's. Mr. Beast is in the business of marketing, not chocolates. Hershey's is literally a company at its core, at its root, is founded on the principle of chocolate. So as a result, he's spending millions upon millions of dollars to get the word out about his chocolates. And I just think from a business standpoint, especially when you look at startups that folded during the pandemic, this cannot be sustainable. And I think in the end, Hershey's is going to win because they'll probably just buy his Feastables brand if it becomes too much of a threat. Now watch him prove me wrong. And he ends up having number one market share of chocolates in the US. A question I want to ask you is, do you ever see See Hershey advertisements? No, right? Their brands and history speaks for themselves. Everybody knows what Hershey's is. Hershey products are not purchased by people because of hype or because it's trending or because of a certain celebrity's endorsement. I think the Feastables ordeal is going to be a fad that's going to pass with enough time. I know I sound very bearish, but once the whole it's new back their fates, the chocolate king that will stand once the dust settles, it's going to be Hershey's. I remember during the pandemic when people my age at the office were raving on and on about Peloton and how gyms were never going to reopen because Peloton is revolutionizing the fitness world and how every middle-class American was going to eventually buy this stupid expensive stationary bicycle. And to feed into that hype, Peloton spent a ton of their limited capital into their marketing campaigns and now, well, look what happened to Peloton? And they're essentially done. Next, we are going to talk about the shares outstanding. Essentially, we want to find out if the company is issuing more stocks and diluting the shareholders, or are they buying back shares? Buying back is a good thing because less shares outstanding means that each share you own has quality over quantity. So back in 2009, there were 229 million shares outstanding. And when you fast forward throughout the years, it does in fact look like Hershey's has been buying back shares. And as of recently, now there are 200 105 million shares outstanding. And as we learned earlier, Hershey's Kager and growth rate is amazing because Hershey has decided to increase their dividends over time and to buy back shares. This is a wonderful thing to see and it's a green flag. Next, let's go ahead and talk about their most recent earnings report. So they have absolutely crushed it in almost every single financial metric. Their business operations are doing fantastic. Their balance sheet looks good as well. So I 
I want to call out some stuff that you might have missed. So Hershey right now is taking a small financial hit in order to develop and invest in domestic manufacturing and distribution, which consequently will increase their gross margins in the future because a lot of that is done overseas. Back in the 1990s, Walmart had spent a ton of capital in order to build out their supply chain network. And in the short term, they were hammered financially. Everybody was questioning the leadership's decision-making skills. But decades later, Walmart's supply chain has paid dividends to be best in class, whereas the other retailers folded because they didn't invest in their domestic supply chain. I'm looking at you, Kmart. I'm looking at you. And another reason as to why the stock is dropping like crazy? Well, they have some headwinds ahead. One is the sector rotation. Investors are shifting from companies like General Mills, Kellogg's, and Smuckers, and into tech giants again. And another headwind is the price of coca is increasing due to supply shortages from heavy rains. Since there's not an unlimited supply of coca, it's driving the cost of coca up, and the coca farms are demanding more profits to be in their pockets. The people running these operations want to increase the wages of their employees, which makes absolute sense to me. This will mean that Hershey needs to allocate a bigger budget in the procurement section of their business to meet their suppliers' demands. There's also that new Ozempic weight loss drug that has a lot of attention and hype surrounding them. Because what Ozempic does is it allows people to eliminate all cravings for junk food. People are fearful and saying Hershey will no longer be relevant or be consumed at the levels that they are right now. And the last headwind? Well, they were fighting Smuckers head-to-head -to, -head to acquire Hostess Brands, the parent company of Twinkies. However, Hershey's did not outbid Smuckers. This was a major setback for Hershey's because they really wanted Hostess to be a part of their portfolio, and I think it makes a lot of sense. To end it on a good note, on the Q3 earnings call, the CFO discussed how the stock right now is attractively priced, and this would be taken into consideration as the board of directors and the executive leadership team proposed the 2024 capital allocation plan, which essentially means how much shares are they going to be buying back next year. And with the dividend payout ratio being around 50%, there is more than enough earnings per share left over for these buybacks to happen, and I'm excited because I'm a shareholder. The next metric that we are going to look at are the technical technical indicators. What does the stock price movement have to say about Hershey? So as of October, Hershey's RSI is below 30, which means compared to their historic RSI, they are being oversold. And with this recent sell-off happening, it does in fact look like Hershey's has met its line of support, and hopefully it can rebound and go up from here. But this is all speculative, and that's why this is my most favorite part of the video. We are going to run some valuation models to figure out the intrinsic value for Hershey, and then compare that to what the Wall Street analysts believe the price targets should be. Because because everything else that we looked at so far, the intangibles, the story, the headwinds, and the tailwinds, they're excellent to derive a story about Hershey. But the numbers and the data and the finances, they tell a story that is more objective and upfront. So the first valuation model we are going to run is the multiples valuation. Essentially, we are going to be looking at similar companies in the same industry as Hershey to figure out an intrinsic value for them. So the median PE ratio for their peers is 21.2. And the peers in question, Mondelez International, which are known for their chocolates and candies, PepsiCo, Hormel, Conagra Brands, and General Mills. This gives us an intrinsic value of Hershey, $176.70. The next valuation model is going to be the discounted cash flow analysis. Essentially, we are going to reach an intrinsic value based on their projected free cash flow growth. So when you look at 2017 all the way to 2022, the awesome thing here is that Hershey has always been net positive on their free cash flow, and they have been trending upwards except during the pandemic when they did decline 13% from 2019 to 2020. But since then, they have been posting double-digit returns. So for the past five years, the average growth rate with that negative 13% baked in is 
13.74%. However, on this channel, we like to play it safe and be a little conservative. So I am going to plug in 8.36%, which is what the analysts are predicting. And with this number, we're going to plug it in alongside with some balance sheet numbers to give us a DCF price for Hershey, $256.71. That sounds a little high. Let's investigate. So Hershey's 52-week range, they did hit a high of $276 back around May. So 256 is not out of the question. The next valuation model was going to be the dividend discount model. So when we look at the dividend growth rate year over year, it does look spicy. That average is going to be 13.93%. We are going to be conservative and play it safe. And instead, we are going to use a 6.4% growth rate for their dividend. Plugging that into the formula, that's going to give us an intrinsic value, $317.07 for Hershey's. And the last valuation model is going to be the Benny Graham's bear model. I call it the bear model because it almost always gives the lowest intrinsic value out of the four. Essentially, we are going to reach an intrinsic value for Hershey based on their growth rate projection and the current AAA corporate bonds yield rate. That is really a mouthful to say. Just say that real quick. The intrinsic value based on Graham's model is going to be $124.55, which brings us to the conclusion. I need a drum roll, please, Jimmy. ba 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 the intrinsic value for Hershey is going to be $218.76. Let's go ahead and see what Wall Street has to say. Wall Street believes that Hershey is worth $234.81 with a high valuation of $285 and a low price target of $180. This guy is really bearish. He does not believe in the future of Hershey's. Some people just don't believe. Wall Street says $234, we say $218. So after hearing everything, everything, you're still interested in Hershey's and you're wondering when is the right time or the right price to jump in. Let's try to figure that out together. So currently the stock is trading for about $182. With a 10% margin of safety baked in, then you're looking to jump in at about $196.88. However, if you decide to buy Hershey's at its current trading price, then you're looking to get a 16% margin of safety baked in. So what is my personal opinion? Well, I'll just say this. When I was buying Target as it hit its 52-week low earlier this year, I was questioning myself because the internet was talking about how Target was doomed, how they were going to be bankrupt, how everyone was going to boycott them. But after doing my research and running valuation models on Target, I saw that they were absolutely undervalued and I just didn't see what other people saw. People were worried about retail theft and their political stance for merchandise back in June. I know how successful Target is and that investment thankfully has paid off and it's nearly up 40%. Likewise, when I think of Hershey, I think of what Warren Buffett said. Be fearful when others are greedy. Be greedy greedy when others are fearful. And in the case of Hershey, their finances look phenomenal. Their valuation models scream that it is undervalued. And I know that Hershey's will adapt to appeal to the consumers going forward. As you saw earlier, they're making organic chocolate, sugar-free chocolate. So what's my plan? I'm going to be buying into it. I am dollar cost averaging as it trades sideways because it is a delicious dividend stock. However, please don't let me sway your decision. You should figure out whether or not you like Hershey's. Do your due diligence and research, please. And if you made it to this point in the video, would you please consider subscribing? It would mean a lot to me. Anyways, I hope to talk to you next time. This is Dividend Compounders with Cheese signing off. Stay safe.